It was likely June 2035. Rose Beck had just returned home from work. She was casually checking her bank account on her laptop and froze. Her balance was zero. What unfolded that day would ripple across the world for years to come. Everything was gone. Her entire savings. Her identity? Stolen. Medical records leaked. Office accounts hacked. Full-blown nightmare. That was Q-Day. People had predicted it. They just didn't think it would be that day. But it was... And the world changed. That's when I realized they had predicted the Q-Day timeline correctly. According to a report published by Wired on March 24, 2025 Q-Day was predicted to occur before 2035. Q-Day was the moment quantum computers broke the encryption guarding our digital world. In seconds, bank accounts, private data, and even national secrets were exposed. Nothing was secure anymore. It wasn't just a tech breakthrough, it was the collapse of digital trust. From a technical standpoint, all encryption protocols we used were based on RSA, developed back in the 1970s. Imagine Alice wants to send Bob a secret message. She uses Bob's public key to lock it. Kind of like putting it in a mailbox that only Bob can open. Bob has the private key, which is like the only key to that mailbox. So only he can read the message. The system works because it's nearly impossible for regular computers to guess Bob's private key from his public one. But quantum computers? They're powerful enough to do that, fast. Google announced its Willow quantum chip at the end of last year. By our best estimates, a calculation that takes Willow under five minutes would take the fastest supercomputer 10 to the 25 years, or a time scale way longer than the age of the universe. That means your private messages, your bank info, even national secrets could all be unlocked. And that's exactly what happened in June this year. Personal disasters were devastating, but the bigger fear loomed over military intelligence. It would be catastrophic if they knew where all our submarines were. Tensions soared overnight. At the heart of this is something called quantum supremacy. The promise of quantum computers is that they can do certain tasks exponentially faster than classical machines. And the quantum supremacy experiment is proof that this is indeed the case. This is insane. Didn't we know this was coming? The day progressed. Our 9-11 lines were overwhelmed. For a moment, we feared this might be doomsday. We still don't know who did it. Could be anyone, anywhere. When Q-Day broke in 2035, chaos spread like wildfire. Years of massive investment into quantum computing had finally reached a breaking. The funding was staggering. China led with $15 billion. The U.S., excluding private investments, spent $1.8 billion. Q-Day marked the moment national security became the world's singular focus. Back on May 8, 2025, Reuters reported that China's funding for quantum supremacy had surged to $41 billion, far surpassing the official investments made by the United States. Experts warned us there was always a silent threat growing just beneath the surface. The threat was called Harvest Now, Decrypt Later. Someone was collecting encrypted data and holding onto it for years. They believed quantum computers would eventually crack the code. And in the end, they were right. But the real question remains, who was behind it all? That's putting it mildly. There were clear signs that Harvest Now, Decrypt Later, wasn't just cybercrime, it was nation-state sponsored. The operation required immense sophistication and even more funding to secretly collect that much encrypted data. And the truth is, we always knew who had both the money and the motive. 
According to a report published in Wired, this wasn't the work of a lone actor. It pointed to something much larger. Multiple nations may have been involved, each with the resources and the reach to make it possible. So why didn't the government act? Look, multiple things happened. It's not like we were asleep. Executive order was signed by the president. We mandated the transition to quantum-resistant cryptography. We followed NIST. We had a plan. Back then, NIST launched a global competition to develop quantum-proof encryption. And now, after years of working with the world's cryptographic community, three of the selected quantum-resistant algorithms are ready for use. The winning algorithms relied on complex structures called lattices, multi-dimensional puzzles so intricate, even quantum computers can't solve them without a map. So a lattice is this geometric grid of points that kind of goes out to infinity in all directions and we use them in very high dimensions, so hundreds or even a thousand or more dimensions. Now is the time for cybersecurity experts to integrate these new algorithms into their current and future systems. But the question now is, how much of that has actually been put into action? This required a massive infrastructure update across a huge inventory of systems. Inventory is a really, really big word. It's a really big word and you could spend an awful lot of time on it. So generally what I, what, you know, one of the discussions that I've been having recently is, uh, you know, start to think about where you're most, where you believe that you have the most risk or exposure. If it's, let's say, the stuff transiting the internet, if you're worried about you know, store now, decrypt later type of attacks, that might be the place that you start to emphasize in terms of providing inventories and, and controls of that place. Q-Day isn't the end. It's the beginning. Technology won't stop because of fear. This quantum age will spark a new era of innovation and breakthroughs.